Coming up, the evil twin makes an appearance. Sure I did. And we go from disco lights to lights out. I'm sure many of you are, as I am, big fans of Huey's Garage and his hoopty buying adventures. Well, recently I took a page out of his book when I purchased this 2007 BMW M5. With the manual gearbox, sight unseen, halfway across the world. I paid just $6,000 for this bucket of magnificence. Clean title, running and driving M5 with 10 screaming cylinders. Some of them may or may not be misfiring, but at this price point, it is the cheapest M5 with six-speed manual in the world. And then you had it shipped 4,000 miles across the Atlantic to Germany and already doubled your investment. Were you hiding there all this time just for that? Sure I did. Does he have an engine? Yes. Yes, it does. Cool. Is it knocking? No. Can I drive it? Ha! <laughs> no. See about that. What's that? Nothing. Nice weather, spark plugs. Anyway, what we have here is one of 1,364 E60 M5s with the manual transmission that was made for North America market only. Coming up is a quick story of how this colorful vehicle landed into my possession. Oh, yes. I'll be honest, I wasn't looking or planning to buy this car. That is until a friend of mine, Petar, posted Craigslist link to this rare and cheap example. Just for fun, I decided to email the seller. I quickly received more pictures and video of the engine running. The car had four previous owners. Carfax shows a minor fender bender in 2014, but the title is clean. Comes with all the goodies like mismatched paint on the doors, broken bumper, working lights on the dash, all of them, and no service history. Everything one would want in a high-performance car that's known for its reliability. I might be wrong about that last part. Anywho, the price was tempting and Petar had a friend in Riley Matthew that was fairly close to the car and he kindly agreed to go and see it. His impressions were not great. The engine is misfiring and working lumpy, it drives pretty poorly and the interior is filthy. So I bought it. I managed to shave off more dollars of the asking price and immediately wired money to the seller. Matthew came through again, he picked up the car, did the paperwork and stored it at his place until it was collected and shipped off to Europe. Thank you again to Matthew and Petar for helping with this purchase. It wouldn't have happened otherwise. Despite everything that was happening in the world, it all went quickly and smoothly. A month and a half later, the car cleared German customs and was being delivered to me in Frankfurt. There it is, boys. I can see it. The third is here. North Carolina. Even the plates are still there. That's really cool. Welcome to Germany, my friends. Welcome to Frankfurt. Sehr schön. Hallo. Hi. Hi. Wie geht's? Gut? Super. <laughs> ich hab gerade schon jemand angesprochen, der den kaufen will. Kaufen? Ja, der will den kaufen. Es <laughs> ist V10. Aber mit äh, Stahlgetriebe. Sehr, sehr selten. Mhm. Aber nicht schön. Nicht im schönen Zustand. Oh, no, no. Es ist äh, sehr, sehr billig. You know you made a solid purchase when the driver tells you the condition is not nice. It'd be funny if when he starts it, there's a huge metallic bang, something shoots off underneath the engine, following by a big puddle of oil. I'd laugh and then cry. Now let's look at some magic. What a machine that is. If Germans don't overcomplicate the transport, no one will. And down it goes. The battery is good. And there it is. Unloaded. Ein Schlüssel. Ein Schlüssel. And ein schlecht Auto. Jesus Christ, it's filthy inside. Is that all? The rest comes with the post. With post, okay. Vielen Dank. So I have also another M5, the older one, the version oh. before this one, so... Okay. This one needs a lot of work, but I only bought it because it's a hand shelter and they yeah. never made that for Europe, yeah. so... Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see okay. what happens. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, let's take it inside. Let's see. This is my first time sitting in an E60. But there's the clutch. That's the most crucial thing. The manual gearbox. And let's see if I know how to start this thing. It goes in here. Press the clutch. Oh, sweet Lord. Every single light is on on the dash. And it's out of gas as well. 
service center soon breaks, ABS, airbag. My God. All right, the clutch feels fine, which is, I guess, a good thing. It sounds like an agricultural machine, literally. Oh, there's a big clunk in the front. But it is running and driving. <laughs> Here it is. Incredibly filthy. It's basically like an animal lived inside. Really nasty. First impressions, it sounds like a tractor. The bumper is broken to bits, but I already knew that. That headlight is old and yellow. The rims are incredibly dirty. But other than that, the body doesn't seem that bad at all. The bodywork, that is. The M5 badge is placed in the wrong position. I can easily take care of that. Have the North Carolina plate. It's gonna go nicely on the wall in the garage. There's a small nick here that I already knew about. Let's see, and you probably, I don't know if you can see it, but the driver's door and the rear door are different color. So there was some painting going on there, but they are definitely different color. Now let's see the party piece of this car, the engine. If I actually got an engine with it and they didn't stick a massive V8 or something inside, how do you open this thing? See, and people think I'm a BMW expert and I don't even know how to pop the hood on this thing. There it is. Ta-da! Oh, of course, the struts are shot. Stay. It actually has a V10. Ow. So are they trying to kill me? Oh my God, look at that. Isn't that interesting? So let's take a look in the interior. Only got one key. The interior needs a really good cleanup. The leather doesn't look too bad. We have a bit of wear here, but I think I can re-dye that and it'll look really nice. Alcantara headliner, which looks really good. Steering wheel is pretty worn. Shift knob, I likely replace this with the ZHP one. There's something over there, I don't know what that is. Let's see the cup holders. Haha, -ha. looks like they are working. Really cool. What do we have here? This is paint touch-up kit. That's always nice to have, I guess. Then we have these. Is it for bumper? Two of them. Huh. Cool. Jesus. Can you come out any faster than that? Let's take a look in the back. Fairly clean. I mean, the letter that is in good condition. Headliner in nice shape. The rear deck is really, really faded. I guess that needs to be repainted. See the window shades. These are always broken, but they are working here. Very cool. Let's see what we have in the boot lid. Jeez. Right. Some cables. I don't know what that is, some sort of diagnostics. A broken side mirror, or, well, these are Velcro thingies for the floor mats. Oil, <laughs> you always need that with a BMW. 5W40. What? Okay, that's the battery. All right, before I proceed anymore, I have to clean it and just generally clean things that you touch the most because it is pandemic outside so my god the key is so filthy it's like this car was never cleaned this is just from the steering wheel i do not understand how people can live like this this is disgusting passenger seat it's pretty all right not too bad these are really cool what is this 
And this is here, specification to not eat. Well, I wasn't thinking to eat it, but thanks for letting me know. Insane. Absolutely insane. And this didn't happen in transport. I saw pictures when I bought it and it was exactly like this. I think it's time to see what the engine sounds like. Well, that doesn't work. I need to find something to prop it. Ah, crap. This is needed. I should do it. Yep. It's completely empty on fuel. It's an engine and it works. Let's keep a gentle rev. Oh yes. I need to go get some gas. Let's give it some European gasoline. Drink up. I'm sure this is just the beginning. Only 10 liters, so it'll probably use that by the time I park it inside the garage. So far, I'm not seeing any deadly noises, which is good. So I'm just driving back and forth to see what it feels like. It sounds like a V10 now. Oh, the clutch is really good. <laughs> can feel the power. It's warm now, by the way. Oh, dear Lord, that sounds good. Every single light is on on the dash, as you can see. The engine sounds overall healthy, but it is misfiring, so I was eager to see the codes. We have a code for a stock open thermostat, coolant sensor, fuel cap, and misfire on cylinder 4 and 8. Based on that, I pulled it inside to do some simple troubleshooting. I cleared the codes and by the time I parked it inside, misfire on cylinder 4 and 8 came back. So I just pulled out the ignition coil on cylinder number 4 and it was showing a misfire on that cylinder. And this is what we have. This looks awfully like Chinese. The ignition coils that you can find on eBay. And then I removed one on cylinder two, and you can see that it says NGK. So this is probably a good ignition coil compared to this one. So what I'm gonna do now is pull the spark plugs out, see their condition, and then just swap cylinder two and cylinder four and see if the misfire follows. Simple as that. I'm not an expert on reading plugs, but these don't look too terrible. A bit black with a grayish tip. I'll be replacing them regardless in the next part. I also swapped ignition coil on cylinder 8 with one on cylinder 6 and fired up the car. There's the check engine light. And hey presto, the misfire moved with the coils. Knowing this is our issue, I ordered a new set of OEM ignition coils. I'm just going to replace the two that were bad on the car, start it and see if that fixed the issue. In goes the lovely new Brummy. There it comes. It goes new one. Yes. I then cleared all of the codes. The airbag light was on due to a discharge battery, which I recharged in the meantime. Cold start. It's fuel. Well, let's see if the check engine light comes back. That's the key here. The airbag light is gone. By the way, the car sounds so much better now. There's no misfire anymore, at least for now. It's idling properly now. Let's give it some very, very tiny revs. The idle is so much better now. It used to idle really high before. So sit rep. The check engine light is not back and the engine is working flawlessly, which is awesome. 
but the ABS and the trifecta lights are back, so that means that I need to rebuild the ABS pump, I believe. But as far as the engine goes, which is the important bit, What a sound! And there you go, the engine is working perfectly. Absolutely no issues, no ticking noises, no knocking noises, nothing. Just perfect. All it needed was two ignition coils. And that was about 45 euros worth of fixing. I don't know if it's too early to say, but I think I got a tiny bit lucky with this car. sell this car. It sounds so freaking amazing. Next faulty item on the list, the trifecta lights. These are caused by a faulty ABS pump and this is the code for it. The pump lives in the wheel arch behind the front left wheel. Ah, yes, shut up. Hello, look at this beefy brake caliper. It does have a bit of a lip, so I'll have to measure. The pads are really good. So now we need to remove the fender liner because the pump is right over there. Everything here looks good. So here's the pump that we need to remove. And if you look closer inside, there are no signs of accidents or repairs being done here. The apron, all of the metalwork looks original and intact. out I bought the repair kit from BM Tech from the UK who also provided me with great support and useful information this is the bearing and these are the carbon brushes that are usually get stuck inside this motor and that's what causes the ABS pump not to work so we're going to replace that but first we need to take it apart this is the motor that I need to remove and I need to shave away or chisel this pin is here. Come on. You should come out. The bearing won't come out. That's the issue. Oh my God. That's why it's seized and it's not working. It's full of gunk. And best of all, this is still stuck. Right, I am not so sure if this pump can be saved after all. This is really bad. All of this should be nice and clean. That's just full of gunk. The water was probably leaking inside and it made a mess basically. Everything looks rusty and corroded. This motor is not repairable. The rubber seal failed and caused all of this. On top of that, the bearing is stuck on the block and I can't remove it without damaging the motor. Enter new slash use pump. This is supposedly a working unit, but for a peace of mind, and since I already have the kit, I'm going to open it and replace motor brushes. And there it is. That's how it's supposed to come out. Nice and easy. This one is looking much better than the other one. You can see that the seal didn't break, so there's no water ingress or brake fluid or whatever. All right, now we can test it apparently. See that? So this pump is working fine. 
So I could just leave it alone, but since I'm already here, I might as well replace it. If I only had three hands. Oh, nice. So this is the bearing. And the carbon brushes are inside. I'll show you in a bit. But see how nice and clean this is in comparison to the old one. So the next step is to measure the distance. So now I need to pull off this bearing somehow. Since the puller can't fit, I used Y scripts to break the outer race of the bearing. Something broke. Ah, it broke. Nice. Cracked it. So. Little balls went everywhere. And for the inner bearing race, I put it in a bench vise and carefully tapped on the spindle. Removed! Fabulous. So here are the brushes that are typically the problem here. That being said, these look to be totally fine. Maybe a tiny bit of a snag. But since I've come this far, I'm going to replace them and clean their sitting position. So now I'm going to blow this out with a compressor. Time for the new stuff to go in. Okay, good. So now I need to solder this. That looks pretty good. That's good. And that's good as well. So it's nice and clean. Yes. This is in. Now it's time to do the bearing. The bearing is tapped into the same position as measured earlier, which is 11.9 millimeters. I think that's it. Next is to clean this with compressed air. That's it. It is in. Now the moment of truth to see if this thing is actually working. Hopefully it doesn't explode in my face, but just to be sure, yep. It's pretty good, huh? The direction says to run it for 30 seconds to bed in the new brushes. It's not overheating, there are no strange noises. Next step. Okay, so now I need to flush the brake fluid through this thing. corners are firmly pressed in. Now we're going to use epoxy to fix it in place. Now I just gotta leave this be. So this is now nice and dry. With epoxy dry and strongly bonded, I swapped out the old ECU module so I don't have to do any coating. Give it a bit of clean around the perimeter. This is the old one. And that is one ABS pump ready to go back on the car. It's 
it. Before bleeding the brakes, I had to clear the codes, only this time I got a new code that couldn't be cleared for a pressure sensor that lives on the block part of the pump. As it turns out, this is not a working unit after all, so I had to remove the pump again and reuse my old block. In hindsight, I should have just plugged the connector first and not the lines. Live and learn. I then struggled to separate the motor and put it on my old block. re it, plugged back on the car, and this time I was able to clear all of the codes. F4, F1, no errors. Yes, sir! Let's check ISTA again, just to be sure. Brake fluid level, that's fine, but no codes for the DAC pump. Alright, let's top it up. First I bled the brakes with a power bleeder and then used ISTA to cycle the pump and follow the on-screen procedure. So now I need to hit continue. You can hear the pump buzzing away. Successfully completed in the rear right. It's the following day. I stayed up until midnight last night. The brake bleeder was giving me issues, so I will need to bleed the brakes again. But I think they're good enough for now to test and see if this repair was successful or not. The airbag light is on, that's because the battery is low. So before the trifecta lights would come back as soon as I moved the car. So let's see if that's going to happen again. All right, looks like the light is not back. I just made a tiny test drive and I'm happy to report that the Trifecta lights are not back. I even got ABS to kick in a couple of times, so it seems that the repair was successful. That is great news. In other great news, the battery is completely dead, so the airbag light is back. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the battery and reset the light again. But we just fixed two major issues with this car, the Trifecta lights and engine misfire. Now we're going to put it on the lift and have a look underneath and see what else needs fixing. Right off the bat, we are missing transmission and engine covers, which is great. I'm sure those are cheap. I gotta say, I'm a little bit surprised. I was expecting to find 5,364 oil leaks, but no, only two. The oil drain plug is leaking and one of the power steering lines. That's actually impressive for a car of this age and this many miles. Thrust arm bushings are looking good. Looks like they've been replaced at some point because it says quality inspected. That screams Chinese to me, if I'm being honest. Oh, this one is cracked. So this one will need to be replaced. The ball joints are looking good. The strut is not leaking. Oh yeah, this bushing is shot. The lower control arm, it's completely split. So that'll need doing. On the bright side, hopefully that's the thing that's making knocking noise in the front. The steering rack looks good. It's not leaking. Sway bar bushings look a bit pierced. I'll have to replace those. So I'm seeing some markings on the oil pan bolts. I don't know if that means that someone actually dropped all of this and replaced the rod bearings. But in any case, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them because I have no records of them being replaced and the car has 142,000 miles. It would be really a big shame if this engine goes kaboom. The belts are looking good. Alternator has been replaced. That looks nice and shiny. Well, to be honest, it's not like I don't have any service records for this car. Carfax tells me that it was maintained at the dealer most of its life and then the last few years it was serviced at some independent shops and alternator is one of the things that was replaced, spark plugs, ignition coils, obviously they used cheap Chinese ignition coils there but you know, the chassis legs look original, they haven't been messed with, that's really good news. Right, so everything surrounding the engine looks pretty good, let's move further down the line. Ah yes, here we have Super Sprint DCAT pipes. This car sounds freaking amazing, but this will be a riot for German tooth inspection. So I already sourced and bought original cats that I'll sadly and likely have to go back onto this car. But the job was done really, really good. Like the welding, everything looks perfect. Really nice. Here's the six speed manual transmission. Looks pretty good. Flex disc is looking pretty good. No cracks there. The rust underneath looks really clean. No rust, but that was, was never really a concern with E60. Stock middle exhaust. Differential, it's a bit dirty, but it is not leaking. The boots are looking good. Those bushings are looking good. Oh, we have aftermarket sway bar. That'll have to go, because German tooth. 
Want to bet these ball joints are shot? We'll find out as soon as I lift the rear end in the air. That control arm ball joint is shot, but that's fine. Those are really easy to replace on both sides. And the ball joints on the smaller guide link are also shot. Those two are fairly easy to replace, so I'm not even mad about that. Diff bushings are looking good. Fuel tank looks good. Actually, this car is really clean underneath. This is really refreshing and nice to see. The floor is nice. Original exhaust. To be completely honest, I was expecting it to be a lot worse underneath. But this is really clean considering the age and miles that this car has. All right, I think now it's time to check how much play we have in the wheels. No play in this wheel. Those bushings are definitely shot and that's likely the cause of our clunking sound, but I can't put enough force on the wheel with my hands to make them move or make a sound. So let's move to the right one. No play in this wheel either. No side to side play. This lower ball joint is good. Well, color me impressed. The ball joints are actually okay. This brake rotor has a bit of a lip, but I think it'll be fine. Still plenty of meat left. So not a lot of suspension issues on this car. Two control arms in the back, two control arms in the front. And those are not that terrible to replace. So what do you think? I'm thinking not too bad for now. We'll see once I dive deep into this engine. We fixed two major issues with the car and that should do it for part one. In the upcoming episodes, I'll be replacing rod bearings, of course, and preparing this car for German tooth inspection, which means getting it mechanically sorted and converting lights to Eurospec. I want to go with LCI headlights and taillights, so that should be a fun retrofit. Anyways, long journey ahead of us, but I'm excited. My wallet? Not so much. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. That helps. See you next time. Also, don't expect videos on this car anytime soon. First, I have to finish working on Project Dubai and then Project Cologne. After that, I can start working on this puppy.